And so I, you know, I let him figure it out and, and uh, we built the whole thing on the server. And, you know, Doc, Doc is so great to work with because Doc, he loves getting natural reactions from you. He, he won't tell you what's coming, you know? He'll yeah. just be like, yeah, I sorted it. It's going to work, you know? And you're like, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> and then we, we, hit, we hit record on that scene. And um, it's, it's from season eight. I don't know if you were there, Impulse, for the moment, but um, yes. the, yeah. the sky darkened, uh, Skiz, and we made this, like, massive pylon thing. It kind of looked like a, like a virus type oh, of thing wow. huge and i just wanted one bit of electricity to hit the top but doc had made it so that electricity smashed into this thing from a 360 above and it was the most dramatic moment that i've ever experienced in the game i was like all of my like cinematic hollywood dreams came true in this moment and it oh, and, and it is in this moment that i realized that minecraft was way more than i thought it was welcome back to the show there's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. Much anticipated guest on the show. We oh, got yeah. Ren Diggity Dog up on the TV here. So excited. Hello. So Everybody. happy to have you here. Thanks for joining us from halfway across the world, Ren. Yeah. My pleasure. I am I am so nervous. I, 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 I can't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shaken. Whoa, yeah. we're just a couple shaken. dudes hanging out. Just, just pretend we're on, we're on the Hermitcraft server. Nobody, you know, we're just seeing your avatar right now. Yeah, yeah. It's not a avatar. couple dudes though. You know, you guys have put together, like the imp, the imp skiz pod is legendary at this point. You know, to, to be on this thing is, uh, is a great honor. So thank you very much for having me over. No, but I am extremely you. nervous. We're honored. I've to have been you, on a man. roller coaster this morning, friends. I woke up this morning. I was like, yes, I'm going to be on the imp skiz pod. This is amazing. <laughs> but by the end of breakfast. I was in pure panic mode, freaking oh, out, like wow. trying to find ways to back out. You know, like, oh, maybe I should tell the guys I'm feeling ill this morning, you know? <laughs> then by lunchtime, I was back on it. I was like, yes, I'm going to be on the podcast. Awesome. <laughs> got in the shower, got out the shower, did the hair, did the face and everything, looked at myself in the mirror. And I was like, no, 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 it's over. No, can't do this. We're out. <laughs> uh, well, uh, for what it's worth, you yeah. look great, man. You look great. Yeah. So, oh, thank you. Thank no, you. No, we're, but, we're... Uh, but thank you very much for having me, guys. I, I appreciate it. Thank Dude, you. Thanks for it's being here. A, uh, I meant so when awesome I said that this has been very anticipated. This has been mm -hmm. when are you guys going to have Ren on? I want to see Ren on the show. So to hear that you're nervous, you're not the first one to say that you're nervous to be on here. I will say I'm shocked every single time. And the reason I'm shocked every time, because we've had some we've had other people on this show. And when they tell me they're nervous, I'm like, oh, you're so like comfortable in your own skin. You're such a natural behind the, the the microphone and you you make this incredible content. You come on here and you're nervous. It's very it, it, it's an honor that you're happy to be here. You're a little nervous to be here. But I tell you, the honor is all on this oh, side yeah. of the couch, man. So uh, yeah. so thank you for giving us your time to to be on the show. No, it's great to be here, guys. It's great. I mean, it, the time difference is weird, though, right? Because you guys have probably just had breakfast, or at least... Yeah, yeah. yeah I got yeah. up at uh, 6 a.m. to start setting up. <laughs> uh, for nice. The, it, it, it's, it's quite the setup, you know, as uh, you know, before we got, got rolling here, Skiz was kind of explaining to Ren uh, what we got going on in the, in the studio and the fact that we do a video-based podcast as well <laughs> as audio. Um, that means cameras and lights and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So it does get... It does get to be a lot, and um, we sh we've shifted rooms back and forth. We've kind of got like our our me and Skiz when we're without a guest, we're in a different space, and then when we have a guest, we'd like to be in this space so that we can get the camera pulled back and and show you up on the TV. So it kind of feels like you're in the room with us, like you're yeah. literally yep. like the same size as us, yeah, <laughs> in, yeah. in our nice. room, <laughs> and uh, we're yeah. able to just talk to you as if you were you were sitting here. Obviously, we would have loved to uh, put them on a flight. Oh, and God. get them like yes. here yeah, physically in a chair, but that would, uh, we're that not, would be great. We're yeah. not quite there we're yet. Not Maybe quite someday. there yet. Maybe. One day we'll yeah. get there. Someday. So, impulse, you I'm, do I'm, something. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ron. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say I'm very happy to see the pillow wall is is very clearly <laughs> yes. in play. Yeah, yeah. I uh, <laughs> gotta we, love we the pillow have a wall. <laughs> separation. I like to have my my arms up. Yeah. You know, I get real comfortable like a lounge yeah. chair yeah. when we're doing yep. this because yep. this is comfortable. It's real. Skins is just chilling, just leaning back, leaning back, just taking it easy. I I sink in i sink into the couch yeah. and by the end of the podcast i'm like like all the way down <laughs> just like what up dude you know and so yeah i kind of slide down through yeah. the podcast i got to readjust every once in a while but um yeah we like to be comfortable during these hopefully you're no, you guys are doing well. a great job with it i mean you know i get the vibe here uh of of minecon which 
I was very lucky to be a part of many years ago when it was still going. Um, and in some ways, because I was also on a couch in this, and, and this was a broadcasted thing that went out to went out on TV and on the internet, but I didn't know it was going out on TV at the time. Um, but <laughs> it was a very nerve wracking moment. You guys don't have as much equipment as was uh, in that room, but it does remind me of the same sort of vibes. I remember sitting on that couch and you get the three, two, one, and the, the guys have the clackboard. <laughs> These guys have a clackboard too, yeah. you know, they're super pro, they've got all the things. <laughs> and then the cameras start coming in on you from all sides and the director's pointing fingers at you to go start talking and stuff. Yep. I get the similar vibes here at the, the Imskiz pod. So, oh, you know, you guys, we're, we do our best to try a great to job seem over here. professional, yeah. but uh, uh, anyway. So, okay. One thing we like yeah. to do when we have guests on is just not assume that everybody yeah, that's uh, what watches Hermitcraft and knows exactly who you are. Although I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people already do. But for that, uh, that 0.1% that may not know who Ren is, if you could just give us a little, little synopsis of, of who you are, what you do, uh, as far as being a content creator and uh and and yeah it, and even if we want to explain where you got your name from is always a fun story so i'll let you take it oh, that is a fun story well obviously uh, a hermit on the hermitcraft server joined in season four before that i was doing a whole bunch of other stuff um you know back in those days we used to do all sorts of series you know you would do a, a, a vanilla series you do a modded series you would try join other groups and do different series and whatnot but when I joined Hermacraft, I decided to Steve Jobs myself and just make one thing and make one thing really well. And so it's been Hermacraft since season four, which I mean, Impulse, that's like what, 50 years ago? I don't even you know. know. What? I, I like, actually think <laughs> it's forever ago. I think I saw a tweet the other day from this this Hermitbot account that said it was the eight year anniversary of your first video on Hermitcraft. Oh wow. Does that sound about right? If, if I remember That does right. sound about right. Yeah. I, I realized this year that I've been in more seasons of Hermitcraft than I've not been, yeah. right? Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. And that kind of blew my mind because I still feel like the new guy. I think you always feel like the new guy, you know, when you join the Hermitcraft <laughs> server. Yeah, um, yeah, Skiz yeah. is getting first hand yeah. of that. I, I know we'll a little see. something about that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. it never goes away. You you always feel like, uh, like you've just joined, you know, because I think um, the joining the hermitcraft server is such a monumentous time in your a moment in your life you know it, it really i think for most hermits or every hermit that moment that you join changes the trajectory of your life forever um and i think that that sticks with you and and uh and i think you always feel like it's your first week on the server you know no matter how good you get at it or whatever you still feel like i don't know what i'm doing it's so difficult you know all <laughs> hermitcraft is so crazy you know i've got to try and uh, and and make my videos as good as possible and all of that you get all of those vibes from day one till the end of time i think um, yeah but it's awesome <laughs> yeah you um so you mentioned you joined season four right mm -hmm. uh you weren't alone that season i think we had a, no. a big boost of of people joining and uh, a lot of you or maybe all of you came from a previous SMP called Kingdom Craft. Am I getting that's that? right? Yeah. That's right. That's and that's right. been a while. Yeah, so was... my brain's like, is that right? <laughs> was it? Yep, that's right. It was. It was Star? me, Isco, Python, Scar, Cub, and then Stress a little bit later. But wow, I remember those days because um, Kingdom Craft with Py was was Python's server, and um, Python invited me and Isco, and and Python was like, you know, the the, the Kingdom Craft guy. And then Python came to Hermitcraft, which was super awesome. We were just so ecstatic when you got invited. This was in uh, end of season three, I think, Python got invited. Um, but of course, he then, you know, started uh, working on, on Hermitcraft. And those of us on Kingdomcraft were like, oh, no, what happens now? You know, mm. our fearless leader is, is, has gone to Hermitcraft. What happens to Kingdomcraft? We carried on going and we carried on going. And then, um, you know, Python put in a great, a good word for us at the start of season four. Uh, and so in many ways, I owe Python a, a huge thank you and... Uh, you know, I even had a, I've had him stay over at my house actually before, but that's that's nowhere near enough to say thank you for Python <laughs> to Python for putting my name forward in season four. You know, um, but but interestingly enough, when he did that, it took a while for the news to trickle through the Kingdom Craft crew, and I was one of the last to hear that I was going to join Hermacraft. <laughs> so there was a point where half of the Kingdom Craft people knew that they were going to Hermitcraft and I didn't. So there was a moment where I was like, 
Oh, oh you no. didn't even know. Oh. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? And I thought it was because I was using a, at the time I was using a, the John Smith texture pack in my survival world, a survival series. So I thought, oh, it must be the texture pack. That's why they don't want me on Hermitcraft. They don't oh, use texture man. packs. Dude, um, what? That's fantastic. Yeah. But then uh, one evening, uh, Iskal came to me and said, dude, you're in Hermitcraft. And it was, I mean, I can remember it like it was yesterday because it, it was the moment that my life changed uh, forever uh, in, in the best of ways. So, so yes, I don't even know if that answered your question, but yes, please it, it, uh, also stop me talking because I will talk for five hours. No, you know what? Um, it's kind of perfect because this is a podcast and if uh, w the three of us weren't talking, it'd be a kind of an odd It'd be an odd podcast. So you're, podcast. you're, you're fitting right in, buddy. So, <laughs> Good. so you're saying, so let me, let me back up a bit. So that was season four. Impulse, were you season three? Three and a half. Three yeah. and a half. You came in the yeah, middle. Yeah, I came of it? in the middle of three. Yeah. Okay, and and so I w I want to talk about because this is a very special moment for me, and I, I'm 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 happy about this. I want to talk about my first exposure to to Ren and Ooh. like and it was in a it was a in a very 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 big fashion. Our worlds You're getting collided. Now. No, no, this is you might. <laughs> hey, I have to entertain you. You're not going to remember this, but uh, and not, that's okay if you don't. But our worlds collided like like head on and it was at Minecon 2016 mm -hmm. um i was there with impulse and tango and the hermits were obviously this is years and years and years before i got to be a hermit which was a couple months ago that so they had a panel hermitcraft panel and i it wasn't going to be streamed and so i'm just there as a as a guest now i was doing youtube but i was lesser known or whatever but I'm just there as a guest and I took it upon myself. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to stream. I'm going to find a way to stream this to the world. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to find a way. And so I started looking into this application called Periscope back in the day. And I was going to use my phone. <laughs> so I'm, I'm using my phone and I'm testing this app. I'm trying to play with it. I'm doing little tests here and there. And I'm very convinced that the Wi-Fi at the, the, place we were at was not going to be able to handle this, at least not handle it well. Right. So I called it off. And it was very upsetting to a lot of people. But then I'm talking maybe 10 minutes before we went live. I got this voice in my head that said, you need to pull your pants up right now and get <laughs> after this. Dude, don't be afraid <laughs> of what might happen. Be excited about what, what could happen. So I decided to do it. So I did it. It went uh, it went off without a hitch, right? Well, it just so happened that Ren Diggity Dog was streaming at the same time, just doing his own stream. And somebody said, dude, Ren, Skiz is is literally streaming uh, the, the panel and you just pivoted. You just stopped your stream and you just went to my to my feed and my feed ended up going to your stream. And I remember seeing you like go put it putting your hands in the air, pumping your hands. You're like, we got it. And it was just like amazing. And all of a sudden, yeah. I'm like, I that was my first actual engagement uh with Ren. And I didn't get to work with him until many years later, which we're gonna talk about, of course. But that was that was do you now do you do you remember that moment? I remember that it was a, a amazing uh, moment so because cool. It was in this moment, really, that you realized uh, how insane Hermacroft was. You know, yes. up until then, we hadn't really done any huge conventions mm -hmm. or things like that. And I think individuals had gone to conventions. And um, I remember seeing Mumbo at a convention in, in the UK. And this poor man, you know, he's really tall. He's six, <laughs> six or whatever, just surrounded by a sea of human beings, just <laughs> un unable to move, you know, yep. just laughing, like th laughing at the situation. Like, what do I do now? Yeah, uh, but yes, th that Minecon was the first time where Hermitcraft was like, you know, it was like, wow, this is huge. You yeah. know, this is YouTube's Minecraft group. This is it. You know, and it was a wonderful moment, Skiz, and, and you having the foresight and the Wi-Fi to be able to do it. You know, was and the arm a lovely bit of serendipity. You know, <laughs> the to, arm to strength get it done. to hold his phone up and record yeah. the entire. It was like an hour long <laughs> yeah. panel, right? It, it was. was ages. Yeah, and, yep. I, and I remember because yep. I think. Uh, Joe Hills was in the crowd with a microphone. Mm -hmm. So I remember being like, when he goes to somebody, I want to be able to, I don't want to get the audience sick with movement, but I want to find a way to bring him into it and go back to you guys and all that. And I remember thinking <laughs> I, my arms will fall off my body before I put this phone down. Cause it was I actually, I remember feeling seat. quite bad because I, I felt like maybe I was yoinking your, your moment you know like i was oh not even a little stealing, bit. stealing your stream or whatever oh. you know i don't know you always have these worries you know like yeah. oh, but, 
you know, this is his thing, but the the the, the idea was like we must get this to as many people as possible. Yeah, hundred percent. That's why I was, so like, I was so grateful. I was so grateful. I was yeah. like, no way. I was like, my my reach <laughs> only goes so far. You know what I mean? With this periscope and my, yeah. my this name wasn't that very nobody's good. ever heard of. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like I, that's what I did. I I tweeted out. Now I will say, I so I tweeted it out, and something happened. It something happened that caused it to get to you. And the something that happened also happened here locally on my phone. What I mean by that is I, I was like, I, I tweeted out, listen, go to this link. It's this new app. You probably don't know what it is. And all of a sudden I went from like eight viewers to 800 in like, like 20 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, and I so was cool. like, what in the world? And I think that whatever boosted it or whatever, somebody must have uh, retweeted the tweet or whatever. I think that that's what led it to your stream. And then when you pivoted, I was just like, I was so stoked. I'm like, this is just one of the coolest days of my life. And here we are all these many years later all these years later it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes it even more interesting for me now knowing that you know you were you're obviously great friends with impulse for very since you were kids i guess right forever yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so it's really great to know that you were you were watching impulse on this journey and and you know uh it's so interesting to see that that's eventually where you would end up also through all sorts of yeah. luck right because that's the only the only way we get to these spots where we are right now is just luck and hard work. These yep. are the only two things that get us here, you know? <laughs> Tell them about your um, fortune cookie. Yeah, uh, I, I have a fortune cookie that's uh, taped to my microphone arm that says, luck is when hard work meets opportunity. And and Perfect. I live by that. Hard work and, and just being mm -hmm. able to um, recognize when you have an opportunity and and not let it pass, right? To, to act upon yep. it. And I think that that's good advice, I, I think. And that's why I really gravitated towards that and like wanting to make sure that that's always on the front of my mind, you know, it's because like you said, yes, uh, it, being a, able to do what we're doing, being able to be in the spot we're in and, and getting invited to Hermacraft, um, it, it was it was luck, but it also was mm -hmm. because uh, we had certain opportunities presented to us and we worked really hard and we still do, right? So, right. you know, I that's mean, the right. same kind of thing goes for me, you know, you kind of had like Python bringing you in to, to Hermitcraft by putting in a good word. Uh, you know, I, I Mumbo, uh, Mumbo had discovered Tango and we used his iron farm and then kind of brought Tango in and then Tango kind of put in a good word for me and brought me in. And then now with Skiz, um, you know, I think by now Skiz has gotten to know every hermit. And so everyone was putting in a good word for Skiz <laughs> all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it just kind of works out that way, you know, that, that, you know, we have to just be cognizant of, of when these opportunities arise that, mm -hmm. that we're ready yep. for them and that we're ready to put in the work to really capitalize on them and make them make them come to fruition. Yep. I think this is why YouTube is such a great medium and why um, I always wanted to be a part of it. And I think it also speaks to a, uh, speaks a lot to why things are a little bit different now in season 10 with how we are creating videos. Uh, let me try explain this. So YouTube for me was always a place where I could watch people just like me doing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't a, a studio production. It wasn't being made in Hollywood. It was normal people doing cool, entertaining content on this new, you know, website called YouTube. And uh, that that always really uh, appealed to me a lot. And um, I think that because, let, let, you know, you, all, all three of us were in an office at some point, right? Yep. Just like everybody who's watching this. Like there is nothing special about you or me or Skiz. No offense, guys, but we're pretty much just bog standard <laughs> yeah. humans, right? <laughs> yep, but just right. like you said, we've spotted an opportunity, we got lucky, and we managed to somehow get our foot in the door that is this crazy YouTube thing. And I think that that's, that's the magic of YouTube, is that it is a place where normal people get to touch something that we all can only ever dream of touching. And I think that uh, season 10, in a way, is kind of showing this also in that we're all sort of returning to a more grassroots type of content production where we're not overproducing, we're not going super Hollywood, like we're really scaling it back and bringing the humanity back into it. And I think there's a lot of um, a lot of magic in that that is slowly being lost on YouTube over the the, the course of the last few years because I think that the the producers think that the audience wants Hollywood. But I don't think that they do, personally. I think the audience wants people. That's what YouTube is about, right? YouTube mm -hmm. is about the people that are what, that are producing the videos for the, the viewers, not not products. And um, I've been really enjoying season 10 for this uh, for this precise reason. I think that uh, there's a there's been a lot of humanity coming out of season 10, which is nice. 
you know. Yeah, that's amazing. Because hermits well are weird, like all extremely weird. You know, you two, you two are pretty weird, but man, some of the other hermits, they're crazy weird. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really well put. Like you, we get so caught up or we did anyway. Um, it, it's just this mindset shift where we started off just being a group of friends, just making these videos for fun and um, not exactly anticipating that it was going to become our livelihood, you know, the, 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 what paid the bills and things like that. And so um, there was a very natural, this is just us goofing and having fun and putting it on in case anybody wants to see it. And then once it started mm -hmm. to grow into, okay, no, this is becoming a, a full-time job for a lot of us. Uh, so therefore I need to, uh, get better and, and continue to just impress. Right. And we started to chase algorithms and, and kind of be driven by trends on YouTube of bigger is better and super cuts and hyper speed, uh, you know, retain retention, uh, methods that we lost ourselves right like people we we started to become yep. disconnected with the audience they weren't getting as much of us they were getting our mm -hmm. editing skills basically yeah um yep. and, and so yep. it became very kind of impersonal uh and so we kind of i don't know I, it's kind of a, a weird thing how collectively we as a group kind of got this aha epiphany <laughs> that it went too far <laughs> and we just mm -hmm. we want to kind of go back to presenting ourselves in a very like you said I like the grassroots term in a very grassroots um, natural way and let the audience uh, love us not our editing or our, our big builds or, or whatever just you know uh, I I brought this up in a previous podcast talking to Skiz uh, about I think the catalyst was actually when we were covering Doc's perimeter. <laughs> in grass because we found ourselves off camera none of us were really recording this other than maybe a time lapse but we just spent a lot of time just hanging out and chatting about yeah. about <clears throat> stuff that if it was on camera people would probably fall asleep to but it was it was just the fact that we had natural conversations with each other and, and kind of just remembered that this is how it started for us was just friends mm -hmm. hanging out playing a video game not chasing algorithms and and trying to hyper produce hollywood style and uh, I think at that point we started to have those conversations. And I got to tell you, man, this this season, and I know it's getting said over and over again, but this season just hits so different. Um, I'm mm -hmm. having the absolute time of my life. This is all brand new to Skiz, so he didn't get to experience a lot of that other stuff. In right. fact, this plays right perfectly into, into his style anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but now, now we can just go back to having fun. And I think that as a viewer, if, if I was to put myself in their shoes, um, I would rather just see... A bunch of people having fun than trying to hyper produce you know what i mean absolutely no, i think i think it's really fascinating because i think that on our side of the coin you know when you think about okay i need to create uh, i need to create my videos to match this trend or whatever right because i perceive that the audience wants the video to look like this there's very little data behind this or there's very little reason uh, that we make these decisions, right? Where I think the audience is 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 much more receptive to human content than than produced content on on YouTube in particular. But for some reason, you know, and, and it, you know, it it comes back to the fact that we aren't professional cinematographers, right? We are not professional writers. We are not professional authors. We're just normal people that somehow landed up being able to make uh, Minecraft videos entertaining. So I think we, we definitely talk ourselves into, into the overproduction stuff. And I certainly uh, started going down that road because um, in season seven, I did a whole bunch of crazy cinematic stuff, but I wanted to try something. It, it, at this time, I wanted to try something that, that no one had ever done before, or at least I hadn't seen uh, done on YouTube before, which was trying to make a sort of cinematic experience out of Minecraft using Minecraft as like a set where you could produce scenes and then using editing and green screening and all the fancy uh, editing stuff to like make a little movie. I, as an artist, I just wanted to try this to see if I could do it. And I managed to pull off a fairly cringy, fairly entertaining <laughs> <laughs> movie, Star Wars type movie thing, which was pretty awesome. And I, I'm proud of it. But I, I've stuck my, like after that, I, I, already pigeonholed myself as a producer into that box. I was like, okay, now I must make, everything must be cinematographic. Everything must be over the top because 
this is what the audience wants. I just decided this, right? There was no, nothing said that it, this was the way. I had just decided that this is the, what my audience wanted. And so in season eight, I was, you know, for every hour on the server, I was six hours in the editing suite, which, uh, you know, you guys can attest to editing. I enjoy editing, but to a point. You to know, a point, it, absolutely. You can't have an hour of, of playing and six hours of editing. I mean, this is, you're, you're no longer a, a YouTuber at this stage. You're just a video editor, right? You're just an editor at this point. Um, and so this season I've worked, uh, I've tried really hard to like stop those assumptions that this is what the audience wants and just make stuff that I am enjoying. And most importantly, makes, make content that I would watch, right? Yep. I, can't, I can't remember who told me this. It might have been Etho, but Etho gets way too much credit i think you know <laughs> we gotta bring him down hermits. a peg we gotta stop lifting <laughs> him up so much he's yeah yeah Mr. no no Humble. well well deserved well deserved but i think I, I it was probably ethos that said something like you should make videos that you would watch yeah and um i i can't remember who told me that but that was a piece of advice that stuck with me forever because i've definitely made videos that i never want to watch again <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i think we all have yeah we've been there you know i've, I've learned a lot from that but um but i mean speaking of etho actually and and season 10 Oh, I, ju I just said we should stop. I'm 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 sorry, guys. I'm just I'm a I'm a, such an Etho fanboy. It's so sad. <laughs> we all are. Uh, no, Don't worry. We all are. Yeah. But, but yeah. we're going we're going down that road. So in preparation for season ten, I actually watched uh, Etho season two again, which is one of my favorite um, bits of Minecraft content on YouTube. And I will go back and watch it every now and then for nostalgia reasons. And uh, you know, I was watching that series, singing, sitting in an office, eating my sandwich and drinking my orange juice, you know, like that's what I remember mm -hmm. when, when I, when I hear Etho's voice, I just think of orange juice and a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> not, not one of the, the, the most important Minecraft producers of all time, you know, no, 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 orange juice and sandwich. Uh, but I was watching that season two uh, of Etho and, and I really, I tasted what I wanted um, and what I think season 10 is starting to touch on, which was the audience coming with us playing Minecraft together and experiencing yep. this home of yep. together. And that's it. It doesn't need fluff. It doesn't need more. Like it just needs that. And that's where the sweet spot is, I think. Absolutely. So you mentioned that so, you, yeah. you need to enjoy what you make. And, and I, I couldn't agree with that more. Right. And I find myself in my videos. I, I literally am so grateful that a lot of people like to watch my videos but at the end of the day, I'm literally making something for me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm making. I'm like, this is what I think would be funny. This is the cadence I'm going for. I always give him a hard time about him being. My I'm, I'm my fan. biggest fan. That's what he says. <laughs> it, which is it's not the worst thing in the world to be because yeah. I, because I really I do enjoy the videos that I make specifically based on the music I'm using, uh, the the speed of the cuts the timing of the cuts, the transition from this scene to that scene, like it's the little things, right? There was, there was a scene mm. where I, uh, it was chaos, chaos and music and, a, and it was a climax and it was the boom and it fades out. And it, as it comes back in, it's me. All I'm doing is mining stone and it's dead quiet. All you hear is a for about four or five seconds until impulse is like scared. So I'm like, ah, you scared me, man. There was something <laughs> about going from that craziness down to the calm, then to a spike and then conversation and off we go. And that's, I'm with you on that. I'm always trying to just get myself into a space to where I like it. I just like what I'm, I'm going with here. And I just, I, I feel like I can't miss. If I start trying to make something that doesn't fit me, then it's, that's just not going to go well. Yeah. I think I one mean, other thing you mentioned, Ren, was like mm -hmm. when, when you would do an hour on the server and then six hours of editing, that meant that that's six hours you weren't on the server yeah. interacting with your server mates, which... Yep. From from yep. what we gather um, and what we're being told from the audience is is their favorite part, right? So exactly that's the piece exactly. that was kind of missing, and we get the same thing with these big builds and and uh, stuff that we do. In, you know, when we go on a creative servers and and we map all this out, like what we're going to build. Well, that's time that we're not all together, you know. Yeah. And yep. so very um, more focused effort on trying to just be on the server more and be open to. Uh, these kind of random interactions that spawn just from people being in vicinity with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is fascinating though. And, and uh, I want to talk a bit more to what Skiz was saying about his editing, because hearing him talk about it is very much the same sort of processes that I go through when I'm editing too. But what you are describing is, uh, is art, right? Yeah. Uh, this maybe sounds a bit pretentious, but essentially when you break art down, it is you creating something out of your imagination 
through a medium of some kind. And our medium is Minecraft and editing, right? And um, that's where it gets a little bit tricky because if I want to create art that is going to take six hours worth of editing, then there's a price to pay for the creation of that yeah, art, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like a, 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 a two-edged sword, really. Um, but I think that there is a balance. I think that... Uh, you know, there is art that takes six hours to make, and there is art that takes an hour to make. I think, for example, um, the first day of, of the Hermitcraft server and all the craziness that went on, this was a beautiful piece of art that we all participated in creating. Um, and I kind of don't like uh, talking about content creation as art because it does feel kind of pretentious and silly. Um, but I will like to controversially say that I don't really like referring to what we do as content. I think content is, it doesn't give it enough credence. Very good. What yeah. we produce is art. I agree, like, man. Like there is so much more to making a Minecraft video than you think, right? <laughs> so making a Hermitcraft video is about you being able to master a bunch of skills to be able to record and edit this video, number one, mm -hmm. right? This is way more than just content. Number two, being able to interact with your, your fellow hermits in an entertaining way. This takes years of building rapport, understanding each other's cues, being able to bounce off of each other and create really funny bits together. This is so much more than content. This is, this is art. Content to me is a brochure or a advert or something uh but, which co yeah, you could argue is also art no but, but I, I think that content has yeah. a word of being a filler you know what i mean you say content creation it sounds like a filler but you're what you're what you're saying when you say that what we do is art i i don't think that's pretentious for even a second i think that that like any other art there's a lot of garbage out there and there's a lot of there's a lot of, of a lot of quote unquote art where they didn't put into it because they really quite literally were just making filler stuff I think we take what we do very seriously, not seriously enough to where it ruins the experience. I think that there's a perfect balance going on. Uh, yes, season 10 is brand new to me. I get that. But there's a certain balance going on to where we're all very comfortable. We're all having a good time. But at the end of the day, every single one of us, and I will, I will speak on behalf of every single hermit, every one of us wants to hit publish with pride. We want, yeah. we want to know yes. we like what we just put out there. Yeah. Nobody wants to say, ah, good enough's good enough. You know what I mean? Absolutely. We, we want our art to be appreciated. We know we want to enjoy mm -hmm. it ourselves. We want people to like what they see. And I'm, I'm to hear what you guys are saying in, in regards to season 10 being so different, I'm getting a ton of feedback, my own videos of people like, I just like you. You're like me, you're Minecraft. Like I do, like I struggle with the same yeah. things. You know, they like the human aspect, just like you're saying, Ren. And that's exactly what art does, right? It yeah. connects at an emotive level. So yeah. What yep. you just described there is art in in it doing its thing. <laughs> I agree. Uh, and, and you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna shout someone else out at this point because I'm also a big a big B double O fanboy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as we all. Yeah. But if we speak about our content as art, you you need need to look no further than a B double O thumbnail or episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and whoever is listening to this, if you have not watched B Dubs's season ten stuff yet. I mean, what are you doing? You need to go watch it. <laughs> it's so it is good. so beautiful and so incredibly designed. It's almost like each frame of the video was chosen to be there. You know, <laughs> yeah. the coloring, the lighting, the camera angles, the thumbnails are just come on, amazing, he's, right? He's amazing. This is this is not content. This this is this is art. See, and, and now I want to tell you my approach in regards to watching B Dub's first video. Okay. I started to watch his, I didn't even finish it. I started to watch it and I'll be honest, I'm going to be I'm very honest here. It was so good. I stopped. And the reason I stopped is because I was like, I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop watching this because it's going to start to screw with me because I do like what mm. I make and I do not want to juxtapose what I do uh, to what B-dubs does. Maybe one day I'm going to be inclined to do it the way he's doing it. And I actually have a lot of confidence that I could do that. That day's not today. I want to make what I make today. So I'm going to stop watching and I'll, and I'm going to come back to it because it was that yep. enjoyable. I mean, it, it was cinema bound. You know what I mean? I mean, it was, it was the cues. It was the coloring. Mm -hmm. It was the effects. It was, he was, that was him publishing with pride. 
And I was like, maybe one day 100%. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it that level, but that day's not today. I'm gonna do something else right yeah. now, and and I'll revisit it. Yeah. And I know that sounds a little contradictory that we're talking about being more of like the grassroots style. Now we're talking about the 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 way that B Dubs has framed his videos, and you can imagine him spending time <laughs> in the editing room, and, and that kind of going against everything we just said. But I don't think it is that way because if you do really watch it. Um, he is still capturing yep. the grassroots Sweet. essence yes. of the season, but Absolutely. he's framing it in just a just a much like more polished yep. frame than I've ever seen. Yes. You know, and, and he's just got a yes. vision. Uh, you know, it, yeah, we we had him on the podcast, and I gushed about him in front of his face for two hours, uh, <laughs> and so I don't want to do it anymore. But but he was, you know, you talked about yeah. you talked about these creators that that we grew up with, basically, right, Ren? Like like when yep. we were first getting into Minecraft, not even thinking about YouTube. These this is who we watched: Etho, mm -hmm. B Dubs, Doc. You know, we watched these OGs yep. uh, pave the way for us and inspire us to do this to be to to publish our first video i mean yep. uh, I, that's a, that's this is actually i'm just gonna roll into this it brings up a good question you know what was the spark that led you to want to publish your first video um i mean it's it's really difficult to identify the exact moment you know but it it, it was a i think it was a culmination of of many things i think that um from a very young age, I knew that I wanted to do something creatively. I wanted to, I, I, I did not have, I didn't want to, I, I wasn't capable of working in the real world. I, I knew that there was, that this wasn't going to be going to work out for me. Um, uh, I, I, I've been a, a, a real life hermit since I was a, a small kid. Um, never needed a lot of people in my life, um, uh, like to spend most of my time on my own. And, you know, someone like that's not going to generally do very well in a <laughs> in the working world where you need to be a part of teams and and so on. So I was always looking for a, a way out. And in fact, uh, there was a song by Incubus, uh, which nice really prompted choice. me thinking. <laughs> yeah, uh, a song called Privilege from from um, the Make Yourself record. And this that whole record is basically about like, finding your own path in life and doing what you love and and all of those sort of cliched things uh but the song privilege in particular um talks about the fact that because we are free when we're born we are we have we are privileged to do whatever we want like you are born free which means you never have to follow a path that you are told to do you, you you're born free and so you can you can make your own way in life and i think that that um that song really always inspired me and uh, one of the first things that I wanted to do was write. And I tried to get into writing, but serious writing. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I wrote my first little novel when I was about 12 on my, my mum's old typewriter. <laughs> wow. Um, mostly because I wanted to use the typewriter, you know, it was so cool. <laughs> it made like all these clicking sounds and you'd get these pages with all the type on it. It just looked so awesome. And there was an ulterior motive because there was this girl that I liked at... Um, at, at my sister's school. And I thought if I wrote her a, a novel, this might get me my first girlfriend, you know, I was 12 or 13 <laughs> or something. So I wrote, I wrote like a 10 page novel for her and I gave it to her, but she, 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 uh, <laughs> she never spoke to me again, probably <laughs> because the, the story of the novel was my brother and I went camping in a forest and got eaten by uh, velociraptors. <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously, not, I just not, watched not Jurassic romantic, Park or something, you know. Uh, not the romantic. <laughs> no, 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 to, no, to, to, to woo her over, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> that is but, amazing. Um, did that? Did, later did, did on, you it, write that around the same time that Jurassic Park was huge? Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but yes, you know, later on in life, I, I, I was, I was. Uh, I, I learned to play guitar from a young age. I tried to be in a band um, after school. I, you know, was was trying to try get into music, but being in a band is hard, and also it's it's very difficult to to realize that you're not that good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that's the hardest bit to to go over as a musician, where you realize, okay, I can sing, I can play this guitar or whatever, but I'm just I'm not that good. It's quite difficult to like make that. Uh, that decision in your head, but you de you know, not all of us can be a uh, Kurt Cobain, you know, <laughs> you know, I'll tell um, you, Ren, I was very similar that I, when I was younger, I was into a lot of sports, but there was this creative pull 
uh, that I wanted to. So I did write, I wrote as well. I did a lot of like poetry when I was younger. Right. I there's that was uh, for some reason, uh, getting whatever I was thinking or feeling out onto paper where it had rhythm and, and rhyme and it felt good to read was like a passion of mine. But when I got really heavily into drumming and I actually did end up having a rock band, you're absolutely right. Being in a, in a band is very, very hard. And it's, it is, it, it is, yep. it is based, especially at a young age and especially like four young male musicians, it's all type A, everybody <laughs> wants it to be their way. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. there was a lot of yeah. budding heads or whatever, but I remember like we persevered through a lot of that and it was a very tough journey, man. And, but, but I have, I mean, obviously no, no regrets or whatever, but it was the same stuff where I was like, we'd go to go do concerts or whatever. And there'd be, a, if there was another band that was playing at the same venue, I'd, I'm always be looking at the drummer. I'm like, that guy is so much better than me. This is why am I here? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yep. there's just such a terrible feeling, but that's, it's a tough call to make. Yeah. yeah. You got to make it at some point. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I wrote poetry. I've written poetry for many girls, by the way. Just gonna put it out there. <laughs> like, I don't know how many of them out there will ever see this, but if you uh, if if you have those poems, please send them to me because I've lost the master copies. <laughs> I'll get hold of them again. <laughs> but for some reason, in my early twenties, I thought that poetry was the way to a girl's heart. It's not, but uh, you know, I gave it a good go. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I tried all of these things. Um, I was on the radio for a little bit, which was a huge. Uh, would be what pushed me into YouTube eventually in the end. Um, I got into onto my local town's radio during my university years. And um, I used to do the late night shifts. But unfortunately, I never had as many listeners as I do on YouTube on that radio station. In fact, one evening I discovered that I had zero listeners. Because when I first started doing radio, I was doing the midnight shift. So 1 a.m. to 5 a.m., right? And this is in a university town, so maybe 8,000 people in this town, right? Tiny little town. And this transmitter was on the top of the mountain. And I didn't even know if it transmitted to the whole town. It might have only transmitted to the campus. Uh, but I was so excited that I got in because I went and auditioned for the, the, to, to, to get a, a slot. And I got into the radio and I was so happy. I had all my CDs, you know. I was doing like new metal and stuff at the time. So I was going to I was gonna introduce this little sleepy town to like Deftones and Tool and Korn <laughs> and like all these bands, you know. And I had this midnight slot. I, I like edited up my first little intro. I mean, it, that was on like Windows 97 or something. I don't even know how I edited all that up, but <laughs> it must have been through like Audacity or something, you know? And I made these, this really cool like new metal sound with like Chino screaming. And then it comes into like, uh, you know, Ticks and Leeches drum roll. And then it's like DJ Rendog. But that wasn't my, <laughs> I was going to use my real, <laughs> my real yeah. DJ name. But, um, um, but but one evening I, I actually realized that I had zero listeners because I didn't know if anyone was listening. We, there's no ways to tell. This was an analog radio station, right? So I decided, okay, this is it. I'm going to test the waters. And, you know, I brought, I, I don't know, I played like Freak on a Leash or something. And then I, I came out of Freak on a Leash and I was like, all right, guys, DJ Rendog here. We're going to have a competition this evening. Hope everyone's doing good. $100 to the first person who calls this number. 078-5479. What are we all? No. You know, whatever the number was. Uh, first caller gets $100. <laughs> Here's Lincoln Park in the end. Like bringing Lincoln Park in the end. Crickets. No, nobody called for the $100. Nothing, not a fun. Then I thought that I said the number wrong, right? <laughs> So then I did it. I did the. I did it again, up to to two hundred dollars. I was like, "Wow, well, you know, I got to give all my pocket money for the month away to get anybody to phone." <laughs> Nothing. Silence. <laughs> Nobody listening. Oh, no. <laughs> so, and I was doing graveyard shift like three three nights a week, right? And I was trying to do university. So I decided what I would do is I I I, I edited up my shows on my computer, stuck it onto a CD. And for six months, I would just go into the, the studio, stick the CD on, and just sleep on the couch. Oh, <laughs> oh my wow. God. I'd pre-record the shows in my room, right? <laughs> like, welcome back to Wednesday Night Rockin' with Randog. Started with Linkin Park. And, you know, I'd like edit in the Linkin Park. So I guess I was making YouTube videos already back then, but they were just audio videos, right? <laughs> oh, my God. That is um, fantastic. <laughs> but anyway, so, so to, to round about where to going back to your, your question about the spark for the whole YouTube thing. Um, I ended up in working in London and I was working in, um, in finance and in, in finance marketing, which is the most boring type of marketing that you can get because I was working on the, the brochures that you get when you walk into a bank, you know, that's trying to sell you insurance or whatever. Yeah. And, um, 
I used to sit there and watch my Minecrafters, you know? I would be in my office, lunchtime, had my sandwich, my orange juice, bit of Etho, bit of Doc, you know, bit of B-dubs, bit of Syndicate, you know, bit of Yogg's cast. And at some point, uh, I just was watching these guys and I was like, man, these guys are just record they they're recording their Minecraft and they're talking into a mic and that's it. There's no that's I can maybe do this. And going back to my mindset of always trying to find a way out to find the back door, as uh, as that Incubus song says, find yourself a back door. Um, suddenly something clicked in my mind and I was like, this might be the back door. This could be a back door into being able to be creative and doing something that I love, which is video games, is something that I've always loved since I was a child. And, uh, you know, I couldn't write, I couldn't be in a band, I couldn't paint, I couldn't draw, but maybe I could do this. And so that day after work, I went to the, remember there used to be these shops where you could get like cameras and, <laughs> and equipment. Now you just get it online, but I would go to the shop and I got like a little microphone and, and I, got, I upgraded my computer, I got some RAM and a CPU. And then from then on, I woke up at five in the morning, recorded an hour of Minecraft survival, chopped it up into six 10 minute segments because Impulse, you might remember, you could only upload 10 minute videos back then. What? And that would be my content for the week. And I would just, at work, I'd go to work, I'd upload my video from home. When I got to work, it would be uploaded. I'd like set up the descriptions and the titles or whatever. And I would just generate this content. And I did this for ages, you know, got five views or whatever, uh, a video, but after about six months or five or six months, something in YouTube picked up my vanilla series and said, okay, this is going to go to everybody who's watching Doc and Etho and all these other YouTubers. And I woke up one morning and my episode one had had like 50,000 views or something oh up God. from like 50. And it was in this moment that the spark really hit. And I was like, okay, this actually could be something. I mean, back then there was no partner program either, you know, so... Mm -hmm. The idea of even doing YouTube full time, this was not even a, a, a thing that was possible at the time. But um, the partner program came in very, maybe within a couple of weeks after all of this happened. And I just took a huge risk and I just walked into my boss's office and I said, Look, he was kind of a cool dude. You know, he wore like a suit with Adidas white trainers, you know, like one of those guys. He was a super cool guy. <laughs> And I explained to him, dude, I'm doing Minecraft on YouTube. I, I've got 50,000 views. He's like, what? That's insane. You should try and go do this. And um, I, I resigned on that day and, and gave it a really good go. And uh, yeah, here we are, I guess. <laughs> wow. That, that's crazy. Like many, many years later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pulling the trigger. I like that. Yeah. So didn't mess around. when you were at work and you were watching... Um, watching etho and b-dubs and stuff like that were you uh, you were obviously a fan of them but were you a fan of minecraft were you playing minecraft a lot before you even started filming it um i was actually doing terraria first and interestingly enough i thought that Ter uh, i thought minecraft copied terraria and it's actually the other way around oh, but at wow. the time i was like oh minecraft it's just a wannabe terraria you know terraria is <laughs> obviously the better game or whatever um <laughs> But no, I wasn't, I wasn't like a huge fan of Minecraft. I didn't even play it. I, I just watched other people play it, right? Um, but the moment I started playing it, that was it. I was, I was you were hooked. hooked instantly. Oh, I mean, come on, who isn't, right? Like it's uh... <laughs> So let me ask you this. I, I always, you know me, I love asking people this question. I just, I like it. And you don't have to have an answer, but did you have an aha moment with Minecraft? And let me explain what I mean by that. I, when I first started playing Minecraft, like I was just like, what, what is this blocky game? How is this a thing? And, <laughs> and then shortly after I started, started to realize what it actually was. I realized, oh, there's a lot more to this game than, than what you're first looking at in your first impression. So I played and played and played. And I can tell you my aha moment was dismantling a, a door that Impulse had made where he watched a video online on how to do the redstone so that when you hit this pressure plate, it, it, it opened to the doors left and right, which is, that's actually harder than most people would think because you're actually turning pistons off in order to do it, whatever. So I didn't understand. I said, how did you make this? And, and then he's like, well, I watched this video and I did it and it was an awesome door that he made. So I dug it up, Ren, and I studied the redstone and, I, and it was when I realized that this powered line of redstone is turning that torch off that was my moment. And that's, what I, that's, that was my aha moment when I was like, Oh, this yeah. game is way bigger than I thought because that's, that's computer language ones and zeros that's on and mm -hmm. off. Right. And so in that moment I was like, this game is 
way bigger than I thought. And the implications are huge. And that's when I turned my <laughs> avatar turned to impulse. I said, people will make computers in this game one day. And and they, they are, and they're it probably, happened, they were yeah. probably doing it then too. And I just didn't know, but that was my moment. Did you have a moment that while playing the game, you realize this game is way more than people think? I mean, I think uh, from an early, an early perspective, I used to play with my brother on a server um, because he was in South Africa and I was in England. And this was a way for us to hang out, you know, and I didn't know anything about Redstone, but he's an engineer. So he, he was really loving the, the uh, Redstone stuff. And one day, one evening I logged in and he said, dude, I've made something amazing. Come, just come see this. And it was the side of a mountain, just a normal mountain. And he was like, wait here. And then he disappeared into the mountain and we were just playing in creative mode, you know, and uh, he pushed a button and all these pistons dropped down and like a, a stream of lava came out and made like this huge lava waterfall down the side of the mountain. And I was like, oh, that is so amazing. That, that made me think, okay, this is way more than just dirt and stone and stuff, you know, like there's way more to this game. Um, but I think going back to what I was talking about earlier about uh, me do, uh, really enjoying cinematic production with Minecraft, what one of the biggest aha moments for me in that regard was working with Doc in season eight, where we were doing this crazy like matrix storyline thing. And I was coming up with these really weird concepts that I wanted to do. And then going to Doc and being like, Doc, is this possible? And Doc would be like, hold my drink. I'll find <laughs> out. He'd go do some redstone research magic. And then he'd be like, yes, this is possible. And there was a moment where I, I said to him, okay, I want this massive pylon thing to power up uh, via lightning. So there was like an axolotl in it, and this axolotl is a part of the storyline, and it needs to be piled up by like a zap of lightning. And Doc is like, yeah, yeah, we can make lightning hit this thing. No problem. It's fine. And so I, you know, I let him figure it out, and, and uh, we built the whole thing on the server. And you know, Doc, Doc is so great to work with because he, Doc, he loves getting natural reactions from you. He, he won't tell you what's coming, you know? He'll yeah. just be like, yeah, I sorted it. It's going to work, you know? And you're like, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> and then we, we, hit, we hit record on that scene. And um, it's, it's from season eight. I don't know if you were there, Impulse, for the moment, but um, yes. the, yeah. the sky darkened, uh, Skiz, and we made this like massive pylon thing. It kind of looked like a, like a virus type oh, of thing wow. huge and i just wanted one bit of electricity to hit the top but doc had made it so that electricity smashed into this thing from a 360 above and it was the most dramatic moment that i've ever experienced in the game i was like all of my like cinematic hollywood dreams came true in this moment and oh, it man. and and it is in this moment that i realized that minecraft was way more than i thought it was like wow it can literally be a Hollywood set if yeah. you want it to be. Yep. Um, and it's the game. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. That moment was epic. Like the, it shook the entire server. Like it didn't, <laughs> it didn't matter where you were on the server. Everybody was just like, what is going on? And we all flew over and we're just like seeing this lightning storm all strike this, this antenna basically. And we're just like, how? How how is this possible? We were yep. and, and we all uh, there was like natural reactions from everyone because nobody knew it was coming. That's cool. Um, and so we all flocked to it just to see like this this storm happening and just freaking out like how is this real? That is cool. <laughs> it yep. was a cool moment. Absolutely. That was a really cool moment. And, and those were yeah. Uh, you guys mm. had like a crazy uh, like you said you had like a matrix thing type going on to you had, like a website that people had to go like decode little Easter eggs and stuff. Wow. I mean. Um, that that was yeah, cool it was, stuff. It was, I mean, it was wild. Yeah, I don't know how you guys came up <laughs> it was with, wild. with with all that. I mean, I can see that you're you know you're kind of a a, a geek. It, it, well, I'll put air quotes. Geek. Uh, you got some Star Wars <laughs> stuff. And, and, sure, uh, you, sure. Yeah, you've been yep. known to kind of geek out about about that kind of stuff. I mean, is that is that do you, does that feed into a lot of your your content? I, I, I know for I know because I watch you that it does. But I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this question for the audience. You know how how is your experiences with with more of the like sci-fi affected what you build and do in game? Oh, I mean it's 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 everything. You know, I'm not like the the probably the thing I geek over most is Magic the Gathering, which is the super nerdy collector card game that I've been playing since I was eleven. Um, it's such a huge been such a huge part of my life that um, 
that I'll never stop playing it, even though I'm hella old now. Um, but you know, I was talking a little bit earlier about being like a, quite a real life hermit and being not a very social person and whatnot. Magic was the way that I interacted with humanity was through magic. So I have like a personal connection with this game, you know, um, which is why I geek out so hard about it all the time. But with Star Wars, you know, I can't tell you who directed this movie or who directed that movie, or I can't tell you, you know, which set designer did this or did that. But what I can tell you is that when I watch these films or w when I watch my favorite bits, my brain goes absolutely mad. And I, I tingle all over from joy of seeing these really cool sci-fi moments. And these things inspire me greatly in, in what I do in Hermacraft. And it's probably a little bit to my detriment because um, I can't really produce content that I want to watch, like we were talking about earlier, unless it has some sort of weird geeky flavor to it. Mm. <laughs> I just, I don't like making, or it's not that I don't like making it. It's just that I'm, I don't think I can. I just, I don't think I can make a normal uh, Minecraft video, uh, whatever that means, right? There's no such thing as a normal Minecraft video, but I guess like, my videos must have some weirdness in them for me to be happy with them. And I, I get the weirdness from Star Wars and from Lord of the Rings and from these things that I, these nerdy things that I love. And, um, you know, especially like with the Star, with Star Wars in particular, I love the aesthetic of Star Wars, right? If we look at this X-Wing over here uh, or this, yeah, this X-Wing, yeah. I just love the, like the whites that they use and the, like the, the rusty panels of steel and then on the inside is like, you know, scratched yellow plastic and like all of these colors and all of these textures. Like for some reason, when I watch Star Wars, that's what I, that's what I focus on. And it inspires me. And I really like, uh, in particular, the, the sci-fi aesthetic of Star Wars, I think is just super awesome. And very much just doing that in season 10 now, <laughs> just basically <laughs> making a Star Wars base. Um, wow. But I, I need these things to, to come up with ideas, you know, like... I can't uh, come up with ideas without being inspired by something else. Um, you know, I just, uh, my brain isn't good enough for that sort of, <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> that sort of art production, I think that's I think. super normal, first of all. And I also think that you're uh, kind of wrong. And, and, I, but, and <laughs> okay. because, because I think that, I think that you do come up with some pretty good ideas and maybe it is inspired by something else that I just didn't see coming. Um, but I'm, I'm talking more about like, I'm really admire how you lean into lore. I really admire how you, you do what a lot of people could deem as uncomfortable for them to do, like playing characters and doing accents and stuff like that. And that really dives deeper into the, the theater part of Ren, which I am going to hold until next episode. Oh. There's, I, I am, I really, <laughs> I think that you and I are going to, we, I, First of all, I have to address something that the audience is thinking. How is it I didn't jump on the fact that you mentioned the band tool? They're expecting me to just want to do it. Yeah. We actually talked a little bit for a few seconds before we started filming saying we cannot make this a tool podcast. Because <laughs> I know if, if, if Ren and I oh, start talking man. about tool, it's going to be a whole uh, Yeah. He had me at Incubus. Yep. I, I love tool also. Yeah. Um, not as much as Skiz, but uh, like every oh, band, you, every Incubus band you mentioned. Ages. Lincoln Park, Incubus, <laughs> Corn. I was like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, well, I'm talking about the bands. I will cut you off. I'm like, can we just talk about Incubus for a little more? Yeah. Um, so yeah, from a standpoint of of uh, your your taste in music, um, I, I'm sure by now a lot of the listeners uh, have picked up on a bit of an accent. Would love to talk a little bit more about where that came from and in your history there, uh, and and just in general, you know, this has been really focused around creating content and what you do on YouTube, but I'd like to hear more and learn more about Ren. Me too. Um, so maybe if you don't cool. mind, if you got time, if you have time, stick around. Um, we'll do another one. Yeah, we'll, have we we'll... been talking for an hour? Yes. Yeah. That went really <laughs> fast. Very well, I feel time. that was just me talking for the most of that. So I'm, I do apologize about that. Don't, don't worry. Do that, don't dude, worry. You brought the lovely radio voice uh, <laughs> yeah. and everybody's, I'm sure uh, happy to hear it. So, but yeah, let's, uh, let's take a break. Let's, let's get into more about who you are and, and your background as a, as a person and just learn more about you. Uh, I'm, uh, that's going to be, if not more interesting than how you got onto YouTube, I'm sure for a lot of people. And, and it's always great to, to get to know each other a little bit better. So let's give you a little bit of cool. a break since it has been an hour. And as far as our viewers are concerned, now yeah, they're going to get a whole week. To yeah, we'll for see, part you, two. see you next week. They're used to it. It's <laughs> fine. They know what's up. So, <laughs> all right, man, we'll catch you in a minute and uh, we'll see everybody else. Nice. Week.
I mean, this is how we used to make content back in the day, right? You'd re record one long session and then cut it up into bits. <laughs> exactly. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you in a bit. See ya.